Hello, my fellow gnomes. Today, I want to talk about object-oriented programming, or OOP. Now, what is it? Well, really, it's just a way of organizing our code together. So I'll explain by adding in a new script. And let's say I want to have some food in my game, right? So we can say local my apple equals apple. Great, so we've now got a name, right? This string called apple. And then if I wanted to have a price for it, well, I'd have to create another variable. So my apple price equals five. And then if I wanted to say my apple color, that's gonna equal red. And suddenly I've got all these different variables. They're not connected together in any way. And it's all quite messy, really. So if I wanted to wrap them all together, well, obviously that's where a table comes in. So I can say my apple and I can have a table, right? And I can put them all together in a list. So now I can say name equals apple price equals five and color equals red. So that's a lot easier to work with right from the off because now I can, th oh, let's get rid of those quotation marks. Now I can say things like print my apple dot price and it also completed for me and if i was to run i can very easily get that five down the output so now it's all under one data structure right all of these values are linked together it's all under my apple however it's still a little cumbersome and we can't really have any custom behavior let's say we wanted to create say another food item maybe we wanted to create an orange well, we have to copy out all of the values again. We couldn't say have any default values. Maybe we want uh, all our fruits to have a price of five. And we can't attach any functionality like functions to it. And this is what object oriented programming is all about. It's having a object like in the real world and having properties and functions attached to it. Now, this should sound pretty similar because, of course, if you're used to Roblox Studio, you're used to the concept of workspace dot base plate. And the base plate has all of these properties and it also has some methods attached to it with the colon. These are all its functions. So the base plate is an object with properties and methods and object oriented programming is a way of creating these and we can create our own custom objects. So with that in mind, let's create a food object. And to do this, we're going to use a module script. Now, if you're new to module scripts, I would recommend watching my video on them. But we're going to go ahead and create a food module script here. Now, just like if we wanted to create a new part, there's an instance dot new function. This is called a constructor, by the way. Well, we need to have a constructor function for our food table. So we'll say function food.new. Now, just like the instance.new function requires some information to start up, in that case, you say the type of object you want. Well, here we're going to assume that the provide us with a default table to start with. So we'll say new table. And we're going to send this my apple value. So let's go and make sure we're referencing the food module. And then we can call it food.new and it wants the new table. So we'll put in my apple. Now, if we wanted to have some say prototype values, some default values that we want all new food items to have what we could do is we could go and create a new table up here called food prototype maybe that could look a little bit like that so by default it'll be called food give it a color of red description mm, tasty price of five and a quantity of one so we want any new food item to have these default values plus whatever values it currently has within the new table. In this case, it's name, price, and color. So how can we do that? Well, we do it using something called meta tables. Now, a meta table is essentially like 
a parent to a table. So the parent sets the rules and behavior. And if anything weird happens, we're going to consult that parent to decide what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write here, uh, set meta table. And we're going to, the table we're going to set is this new table we've been given. And the meta table, its parent table, in this case, will be the food table. So we're saying we've got this new table and then I want you to check into our parent table food to look for anything. Now there's one more thing we need to do is we need to set up a rule for the parent the meta table of food. And that rule is food dot underscore underscore index. And I want to say if you find something, if we reference something in this food table, and it's not there because normally if you try and access say food prototype dot health right that's not one of these values so it return nil but if it's not there i actually want you to check and look in a different table so if you look inside the food table you don't find it i want you to check the food prototype and we should actually put this on the line below so we can actually get access to it food prototype and we're actually just going to return uh, this new meta table we've created. So if we head back into our script, and I'll show you how this works. So we'll say local my food equals the food dot new because we're returning it back. And now if I was to print out my food, we should see all of these values that we've created up here, right? Apple price and its color. You see, look, there they are. But, of course, in our prototype, we actually had a description as well. So watch what happens. If I say my food dot description, it's for starters, it's being automatically suggested to us. And so if I now run that, I'm actually going to get, hmm, tasty. Even though I haven't defined it as a property here, because it was in my prototype, what happened is it looked it up. It was like, well... I don't find the description property in this table, but I did find it in the food prototype. So I'll assign that to you. So now we have these default values. We could go ahead and we could create uh, an entirely new food, right? We could say local my other food equals food dot new. And this time we're gonna supply an entirely blank table. So there's no, no properties of our own we're creating. And I'm going to say print my other food dot name my other food dot price. And when I run that, I'm going to find out food five because there's all the default values. Now, this can be pretty handy on its own. But what if we wanted to have some functions attached to it? Much like we can say workspace dot faceplate colon destroy. Maybe we would like to say my food eat and we could eat the food. There we go. We could eat the food. So in order to do this, well, we're going to need to create a new function. Function food colon eat. Uh, but we're going to need to do a little bit more setting up. So instead of indexing the food prototype, we can actually index the parent table itself. So food is going to search itself for elements if it doesn't contain it. Now that might be a little bit strange, but remember when I said it's like having another table as your parent? Well, in this case, we're saying that food's an adult. It can decide for itself, okay? And instead of having this separate food prototype, we could actually do it all inside of our new constructor. So instead of returning straight away, we can say local uh, new food equals set meta table using the new table. And in fact, let's not even assume they have a table. Let's say or empty table if they haven't provided one. And then we can just set all the properties. So the new food will equal if they've provided it, in which case it will be new food dot name or default property of some food. 
and we're going to do that again for every property we want to have. So that's a different way of setting up all the default values. Now we can get rid of the food prototype table. Make sure we return the new food. And the advantage of doing it like this is it means if we were to print out uh, my other food, we can see all the values that are defined instantly rather than us having to look up an additional table, in that case, the food prototype table. And once we've done this, uh, we can then call the food eat table. How would we access from the eat table all of these values, right? Do we have to provide, say, new food again? Well, no, because it's actually a hidden prototype. By the fact that it's a colon, we've actually got this thing called self. And self refers to the object that we've just created using the meta table. So we can say self.quantity minus equals one, and then we can print out, say, uh, self.name has been eaten. New quantity is self.quantity. We'll go back into our script. And now we can get rid of these brackets. And I'm just going to say, instead of printing my other food, eat. And now when I run that, I should see some food has been eaten. New quantity is zero. And if I say put in a table here, and I said the name of the food equals pasta, and I set the quantity equal to 10. Now, if I eat my other food, it will say pasta is eaten. New quantity is nine. I can call that function for any of these new objects. So if I eat my food, well, now the quantity is going to go down to zero. Pasta has been eaten and apple has been eaten. So there we go. That is the basics of object oriented programming. Hopefully that gets you started and you can see how you could apply this to your own projects. Now it is worth noting or reminding again that you don't need to use this method for every single project and every single problem. It's especially useful if you've got something where you've got a lot of repetition, like food, where you have a lot of similar properties and you want similar functionality. And the more you use this technique, the more you'll figure out where or rather where not to use it. Well, that's all we've got time for in today's video. So thank you very much for watching. If you've got more questions, then let me know. And maybe I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.